As we said, the argument of Romans 13 is to not rebel, but to be in subjection. We covered this. The argument of Matthew 22 is that when a human authority is outside of its lane, we can disobey them. Now, I want you to turn over to Mark 12 because it's important that we see this with our own eyes. There will be a bit of carryover from last week, but it's important to cover this again so that we not confuse this passage from what Acts 5.29 is teaching us. Mark 12, verse 17. And Jesus answered and said to them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. There are legitimate things that belong to Caesar, but there are also legitimate things that do not belong to Caesar. Allow me to illustrate this. This is an example, similar example I heard from Pastor, Pastor Waldron about homeschooling. But it was relevant to us because it actually happened to us as well. When we lived in Costa Rica, it was illegal, and it still is illegal, to homeschool there. The government had other schools available, both private and public. They had Christian schools even available. There were even these other schools that we could have sent our children to. And so they had a way that we didn't have to homeschool, they said. But by telling us and the citizens of Costa Rica that we could not homeschool our children... They were commanding their citizens not to sin, right? They were not commanding them to commit a sin. It wouldn't have been sinful for us to send our children to school. So the government is not saying, you disobey God, you have to sin against us. So the question that remains, if we chose to not homeschool, or to not send our, school, our children to school, would we have been sinning by disobeying the government? Well, No. Because the state had usurped their authority and they were commanding something that was frankly none of their business. You see? Now we also knew of brothers and sisters in our very congregation there in Costa Rica who wanted to homeschool and were homeschooling. But they didn't because of the consequences that they would face. They were homeschooling their children. And the government showed up at their door and said, you have eight days to send your children to public school or we're going to take them from you. They threatened to take their children with force. So they in turn put their children into school. Now, were these brothers and sisters sinning by doing so? No. Were we sinning because we didn't send our children to school? No. But what we see here is Caesar was operating outside of his authority. He didn't have any kind of business of telling children how they can instruct and school their children. And so we can't obey Him in those situations, but we can also disobey Him and not incur any sin. This is what Mark 12 is teaching us, to render those things to Caesar that are Caesar's. This is the issue of conscientious disobedience. But the argument of Acts 5.29, our text for today, is completely different and should not be confused with this principle. Acts 5.29 tells us something completely different than what we heard last week and what we hear from Matthew 22. Acts 5.29 tells us that we must disobey man and we must obey God when man commands us to sin. When man commands us to do something contrary to God's word. Not that we should or not that we can, but we must there is a present obligation when a human authority tells us to sin, we must disobey. We absolutely have to. And I hope you can see the distinction in those two things right now. There is no other option for us. The apostles had no other option but to disobey the government authorities. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had no other option but to refuse to bow down to those golden idols.